or 800-348-1007. Press the yellow button to begin enjoying your Allen. What is an Allen? The Allen Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. Got uh, something for it before we get out of here uh, shortly. Oh, I got Black Panther passes for it. Wakanda Forever is the Black Panther sequel. Uh, Sans uh, one Chadwick Boseman. Of course, he passed away. And um, I haven't seen any advance word on the movie. It, it's got to be an incredible task to do a sequel for a massive movie when your star has died. Even Liam Hemsworth is going to replace Henry Cavill over in that Witcher show. And that's not nearly as big a deal as Black Panther. So I'll have uh, Black Panther passes for you. Uh, We're doing a sneak on November the 9th out at Cinemark Valley View. So you'll see it two, it opens at Friday. So you'll see it a couple of nights for everybody else. The final film in phase four of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. For people who are keeping track of those things. Of course, not so we're going into phase five. This is where they will pull out all of the uh, tertiary characters and try to make movie franchises out of them. Mm-hmm. So um, I'll have that for you um, in about a half an hour. If you listen to the show, by the way, on iHeartRadio from outside Ohio, tell me where you do that. I'm always curious where people are listening. Evan listens in Minneapolis. Uh, Brian is in Memphis. Norm listens in Detroit. Spencer's down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And uh, Steve listens in China Grove, North Carolina. Uh, So thanks. You can always leave us messages there, too, if you want. You guys, enough of the sweatpant conversation. I had to check my phone to see if I was on an old podcast when I got into my car today. Because this is a conversation that I feel like we have every other day. If you like sweatpants, wear sweatpants. If you like jeans, wear jeans. If you don't want to dress any at all, have at it. Let me know where you'll be. I'll watch. Yeah, I don't like your voice. I didn't ask you a friggin' thing. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Oh, Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, We ended up because it was just starting. Didn't really intend to. uh, But it was just starting. And um, we watched Jurassic Park with our daughter yesterday. Oh, yeah. The very first Jurassic Park. She had her hand over her eyes. Because there's kids in danger in that movie constantly. (laughs) Yeah. So it's so good. Right. It's thrilling. But I kind of told her, I'm like, everybody's going to be fine. It's just going to be a bit of a roller coaster until then. Not the lawyer. Not all the kids. She didn't care about the lawyer. Mm -mm. God. The first Jurassic Park. It's still literally, even with the their old timey effects, it still stands. It's and, so good. It looks great. It's, it's my favorite so movie. Good. Isn't it? Isn't it? It's funny you mentioned that because I was watching. It, I was like, this represented state of the art special effects in 1993. But it was good, but it's though. not that bad. No, I know. But you watch it now, and you're so attuned to how things have improved that you're like, it looks kind of cartoony. To be quite, that's what I'm saying. To be quite honest, like the newest ones, it's. It's like over animated. Yeah, like the, the the dinosaurs. There's so much look CGI. Too, too too fake. And I'm like, all right. So now they got they had to get a dino, a bigger dinosaur to fight the big dinosaur, and now mm-hmm. they have to fight. I'm like, this is so old timey. An allosaurus. But it was also peak cool Goldblum too. Oh yeah. Right. No, it's a. I haven't seen it in a while, but great movie. That movie was supposed to be because you think of Sam Neill, right? I love Sam Neill. He's in some of my favorite movies. He's in Event Horizon. He's in the Third Omen movie. I think he's a great actor. Jurassic Park was supposed to be, instead of Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum, it was supposed to be Harrison Ford and Jim Carrey. This is Jim Carrey was Jeff Goldblum. Yes, he was Malcolm. Well, this is silly. This is ninety three, where where uh, 
Jim Carrey could write his own. He could do whatever he wanted. Yeah, to but do. he'd have been way too unless he could have played it a little more straight. But I also, think when they started that's the conclusion filming, they came to. Yeah, but when they started filming it, had he even really popped yet? You might be right, but I mean, it was he was on a lot of people's radar. Listen, mm-hmm. they made the right choice. I mean, oh it's, yeah, you know. Because you want that like cool, sarcastic, not like over the top. I guess he didn't. And, have and Harrison to do Ford, that, but... he would have been okay, but Sam Neill brought like you believed him as that character more than like he's just Indiana Jones with dinosaurs now. Right. If you have <laughs> Harrison Ford in it, and that's kind of how Chris Pratt plays the char- character he plays. Yeah. Again, I would have been fine with one Jurassic Park movie. I mean, it was such a monster. Now those kinds of movies regularly make a billion dollars, but that was a big deal back then, the Jurassic Park. It, it, it was the highest grossing movie in history at that time. It's the best movie I've ever seen in theaters. It's awesome. It was so fun watching that in theaters. I was terrified. It was so intense. And that's the movie that made me fall in love with going to the movies because mm-hmm. it was such oh, a great. Story. It is, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's the, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Like I come came out of that movie. I'm like, I, I feel different. Like I'm like, it, I did. <laughs> I I was like the world. Like I saw cinematography in like the world after mm-hmm. that movie. Like sure. watching out. Like it had just rained, so like the. Blacktop was all like shiny and stuff. I'm like, I'm like, that's how it looks in the movies. Mm-hmm. And I watched a lot of shows like behind the scenes and stuff, and I knew that they would wet down streets, so yeah. they look like that in movies. I'm like, and it was just all clicked and came together. Loved it. Hmm. It's the best. I will after I read a book, like if I finish a book, I will say for like a week after that, I narrate my whole life. Yeah. Like I just am like looking around mm-hmm. and I'm like, as the Amazon Prime car pulled up in front of my house on the leafy street in the fourth day of November. Like, that's exactly... I sat and sipped my coffee while I watched him unload. Yeah! This guy unloaded right there in front of me. He brought the package to my doorstep. Oh, there! It was pizza. Um. (laughs) What could it be? From Amazon. Yeah. A late delivery? A package I had forgotten that I ordered? Ah, it was pizza. Speaking of two days late, and sustenance, I was, I was reminded again of how I've been waiting on men my entire life. Oh, <laughs> and credits. What was the movie, Pound Cake, that made you fall in love with going to the movies, or did you? Did you not care? Some no, people don't care were, about going to the movies. There were, there were, there were a few. I was, I got suckered in. I never read the books, obviously, but I was a big Harry Potter movie fan, so. I mean, obviously, Sorcerer's Stone, the very, very first the, one. The very first one. That was when I started running around wearing capes. But I think <laughs> I'm trying to. I think it goes back even further than that. Like Lilo and Stitch, that was like a big one for me. Where we but that had, was animated, right? It was, but there was a movie theater in Oberlin that was like three dollars a movie, and when my mom really just wanted a night to herself, sure, she's like, "Damn it, go, go to a go to the cheap and, seats." And, but no, they're, they're all like that. That's Oberlin was just it was a one theater movie theater and it was just like three bucks and you go see a movie and all the town's kids were there. Oh, Oberlin had like an old timey movie theater where, yeah, they, where they showed one movie every week? Yeah, I think they updated it now because I think now it's owned by the college but when I was huh. a kid, the city owned it and it was a one theater movie theater and they had like two dollar Tuesdays and then the rest of the night it was like three bucks. So I miss you, having theaters like that. Yeah, you couldn't oh, lose. Yeah. That's what, there was uh, two screens in the Medina movie theater That's it. and it was, yeah. Is it called the Medina Twin? Uh, I think it was just Medina Theater. Oh, and it was, yeah, kind of run down, kind of, but it was yeah. it was cheap, and it we just go and see movies there, and then hang out in the Medina Square because sure. they had you know a hot dog shop. It was just like a good afternoon. We uh, we had the Twin Four Hundred on the far north side of Chicago. Yeah, two huge screens. What was your fall in love with movie? Poltergeist. Oh, nineteen eighty two. You I saw was, it in the theater? Oh, I was eleven years old. Yes. See, I was a little bit older. Mine was um, Pirates of the Caribbean. I saw that four I times. I just made you that. horny. It, well, I think that might be part of it. We didn't. Movies were not a thing we did because we had seven people in our mm-hmm. family. Mm-hmm. So movies were even twenty years ago, thirty years ago. Really movies expensive. Were too expensive for yeah. our family to do. So um, it came out. I was in like eighth grade, I think. So I was like thirteen. That guy liner was huge. This is like prime pop punk. And I saw the first Pirates of the Caribbean in the movie theater, and I was like, this is the best thing I've ever seen. And then I saw it three more times. Yeah, it was such that. a fun, funny movie. It was movie. so funny. It was yeah. funny. It was like kind of like But it was kind of scary, scary a little bit. Yeah. It's like, it's, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah, mine was Lilo and Stitch. I looked up the release date. It was 2002. So I would have been 
like 10 years old when that came out. That was like the earliest one. And we saw that. It, I mean, it, it played at that movie theater for about like two weeks. I feel like we went every single night, and that was like my brother and I's thing. Ryan would bring his girlfriends there. I would be in a row by myself, probably just with a bunch of snacks. <laughs> I, that's how it was. He was cutting a hole under the popcorn. I don't, I don't know what he was doing, but my mom, she's Listen, like... Listen, we know Ryan wasn't wasting any popcorn either. So. <laughs> <laughs> he finished the popcorn first, then cut the hole. <laughs> he had a real difficult decision to um, make. But, on, Every man. movie. <laughs> my mom wouldn't let me go by myself, so she was like, you're going to go with your brother. And then so we would go there, stick together, quotation marks, and then... Or, or, yeah, quotation marks, I did it right. And then he would go with his date. Um, that was the first one I remember seeing back to back to back. And then I think the Hannah Montana movie came out, saw that a lot. <clears throat> um, wow. there, there was a few of them. Hmm. It's the, the Hannah Montana it's movie. After fine. that, after Pirates of the Caribbean, I think not too long after that was Anchorman, was like the next movie that I saw. Mo- there was like the my first real big time going to the movies, I saw movies a bunch of times because it was like Pirates of the Caribbean. And then I remember seeing Anchorman a couple times. I saw 40 Year Old Virgin a few times. Uh, super bad. Like there were several movies that I just latched onto so hard that I ended up seeing huh. over and over and over again. But that this was all high school age. This wasn't like a little kid. Hmm. I wasn't eight seeing forty. You had to pay for your own tickets when you got older, right? Yeah. You guys want to hear what political Joe left me? Oh. Been dying. Is to it hear nine this. minutes long? <laughs> it's pretty long. <laughs> it's not nine minutes, but. Uh, He called three different times. I stitched some of them together. Political Joe is a guy who calls occasionally. I call him that because his first forays into this show where he'd call Hammered. Mm -hmm. I think he's a truck driver. I've been able to glean a couple of facts about him along the way. but um, And he will uh, chastise me for talking politics, which I don't really do that often anymore, and then chastise me for not talking about politics enough. So it's always a roller coaster ride with political Joe. Hey, fat face, Alan. See, this it always starts out <laughs> very confrontational, cursing, calling me names. Hey, fat face, Alan. Alan, there you go again, spewing your liberal fucking agenda on the radio with nanny pushback. There ain't a damn person on the planet, right? Oh, you don't take calls. You won't. Anybody who uh, doesn't agree with By the way, aren't I playing his call right now? Yeah, but you didn't take it. Oh. He left it. (laughs) You know, if he was familiar more with the show, he'd know that the calls I die to take are the ones that people don't like me. Those are will always be the very first calls I'll gravitate towards. They just don't usually have the nuts to call me live. Your liberal agenda. And the three of you behind him... Just flap your flippers like a damn seal from SeaWorld. Flap, 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 flap. Actually, <laughs> uh, being flap the liberal that I am, I'm yeah. very against SeaWorld and having Amen. Those, Amen, Bill. That's right. You stand up for what's there. right. That's right. Those, That's they right. should not be uh, performing like that. They're if I can eat them, I can watch them too. Uh, what are you talking about? If I can eat them, I can watch eat them. Seals? If I eat seafood. Then huh. why why can't we go? Do you eat see the- seals? I mean, if it was okay for if it was okay to eat, I can't say I wouldn't try it. Hmm. Okay. And another piece of the pound cake puzzle falls <laughs> into place. We love Ellen. Oh, he's our boss. We love everything he says. Hey, pound cake. You would be welcome in the Republican Party. Pound cake, though. Gay lesbian community is. Moved so far right to the Republican. You make more money. You don't have kids. You can be rich. Welcome aboard, Pound. Like political Joe. Yeah. I well, think we he's don't rolling know that in. He's it. not rich. Well, he sounds rich to me. Sounds rich. He sounds like a guy that doesn't wear sweatpants. Rich in, public. in friends. <laughs> okay. God bless America. Sorry to be a bug, but I just want to thank you. I know the hard work you do. And in these. Everything you put into the he show. He does a complete 180. I was like, wait a minute. He what just is switches he? gears and. Show, I know what you do. I understand what you do. It is not easy. It is complete, time consuming. Alan, and everything you do, it shows on your radio show. I really <laughs> like it. You've got a hit on the buzzard. 
But, Alan, I don't edit my stuff that I call in on and make me out to be a bad guy, Alan. I'm not a bad guy. You know that. Man, there's what Mind you, I don't know anything about him no. other than, right? I've never guy. met him, you know. and he might be, but I don't know. Please. Left and right can get along, and I get along. I I like what you do, and I know the hard work you put in behind the scenes for this. Ninety nine percent of your listeners do not know what goes in behind the scenes. What you do? Well, I'm the one percent. I know the time. And so the he effort. is rich. Told you. Ah. He's one of the one percenters. Out here bragging oh, this about guy. It. Okay, well, then the I will. You put in to making a great show, Alan. Hate the show, love the show, Alan. Keep up the good work. Political Joe is all over the place. Oh my gosh. It's almost like halfway through, he feels bad for everything he just said. It's like an abusive relationship. <laughs> mm hmm. So what's happening? Am here? I in an abusive relationship with political you are. Joe? Yes. Because I can't get out. I won't marry. He, I won't leave him. He he emotionally abuses you, physically or not physically, mentally torments you by calling you fat face and puts you down and body shames you. But then he feels bad, so he apologizes and says he knows how hard you work, so you feel guilty, so you never leave him. Well, I hope it's he a knows. Cycle. I hope he knows. Gesundheit. In no way is he mentally tormenting me. Also, I want him to pay attention that just because we agree with Alan on things politically does not mean we are nice to Alan. Quarter bagel. That's right. Swipe in public. That's, That's right. right. His face is kind of fat. I uh, don't require people to be nice to me. I grew up Catholic. We hit him I up. I don't know from that. We fight back on the things that matter. Right. right. Also, what he said about me joining the Republican Party. He is Republican. I've heard that. Okay, it's already a Trump guy. I was say I've heard that from a lot of Republicans that they're like, you know how welcome you are here. You're like, don't don't go over to the left. They, don't, you know don't how welcome you are yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. we don't want to have rights or anybody to you know. But it's just so funny. They shouldn't have to tell you if you say. really were. I have yeah. both. I have both Republican and Democrat friends, and the the Republicans always say like, don't go over to the left. They use identity polit- politics, and I'm like. And then you say, like, all but politics you, are identity <laughs> politics. Like by you the as way. a black gay man, you should not be going to be used that way. And I'm like, you just identified me as a black gay man, and you want me to be on the Republican Party, so you can say you can have a black gay Republican. You do the same thing. Yeah, but well, you know why that. they like him. Hey, I molest children. Uh, what does that have to do with me? Yeah, I don't so do that sense. anyways. But what to- <laughs> hey, Dean. <laughs> not babies. Yeah. What's up? How are you? Good. What's up? Hey, uh. You know, not a while back, I heard people commenting about wearing sweatpants out and oh boy, well, but yeah, I got a forty dollar pair of Under Armour sweatpants I wear all the time. I never get any. Must be nice comments about them. Must be yeah. nice. So I think it's it's all right. People go out and you know be comfortable. Yeah. But anyway, I got a joke for you. Oh boy. Why don't witches wear panties? I don't know. Lose the grip. To get a better grip on the broom. <laughs> Very good, Mary. Oh, Mary, you did it. You I knew it. Bested Dean in Amherst. Vaginal Holy camole. All right. <laughs> nice. We did it. We did it. All right, I'm going to take a break. I'll come back. I'll have those Black Panther passes for you. And then i got to haul ass over to the Ivy. We're going to do the Cox Out pregame uh, tonight. That starts around 545 if you want to join uh, me for that with uh, Bud Light. Might get yourself to the Bahamas. And uh, I'll have the uh, Wakanda Forever passes here for you when we return. 35192 if you want to text for something. It's the Alan Cox Show. On our free iHeartRadio app and your favorite smart device. Just tell us.